In a 24 hour day, how much time would you say you dedicate to yourself? Work doesn't count, relationships don't count. So how much time out of the day are you putting aside to ensure that you're giving yourself enough care? It's no secret we live in a fast paced world. The fear of falling behind is real and it can cause us to prioritize our work over our wellness. Letting go of our self care routines is an effortless act, but dedicating enough time to yourself every single day will provide you with more inner peace, prevent burnout, and propel you towards your goals in a faster way. So this is my weekly wellness guide. It's basically a table that I created in Word to keep track of personal goals that are unrelated to work, school, or relationships. It's just my way of knowing that I'm taking care of myself. When I decided that I wanted to make this chart kind of as a visual aid, it took a little bit of analyzing my own life to understand what works best for me and what would fit best on this table. Certain things that are on there, like getting enough sleep and drinking enough water, I feel like are things that we should all strive for, but I wanted to make sure I didn't forget those things. The purpose of the guide really isn't to fill the whole entire thing with checks. It's just to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. And if I do tend to forget, that's okay. The goal of the chart is that I'll remember to do it tomorrow. So I guess now I'll take you through my guide and let you know what I chose to put on there, why, and how it's helped me. So apparently your body doesn't necessarily need 64 ounces of water a day to be healthy. Even if that's true and you don't necessarily need that much water, it's still good for you to get more of it. It's good for your skin, it's good for your skin, it's good for your brain. Water really is just an essential part of our daily lives. So even if you feel like you don't need that much water a day, it's not bad for you to get that much water a day. That's my take. I mean, I'm no doctor. I used to never reach 64 ounces of water a day because I thought that that was just really difficult and just quite honestly a hassle. But the way that I made this goal much easier to attain was just making sure that there was always water near me. At this point, we've been talking about water for like almost over a minute now. So I think that's just enough. So let's move on. I actually really just woke up. <laughs> I don't think I need to give a whole explanation as to why sleeping is important. It wasn't ever as much of a priority as it is for me now. You just function better when you have better sleep. It's one of those things on the table that, like water, I think it's something that everyone should be striving for. Everyone should want better sleep, you know? I'm sorry, just give me a moment. Are you done? Reading is a skill that I'm really working on developing. I try to read every single night. But I'll be honest, I do fall behind sometimes. But these are just a few of the books that I've started or finished this year. I've started more than I finished. This one I've finished, definitely. But I think it's important to acknowledge that reading, it's just not everybody's thing. And if it's not your thing, that's okay. I think reading has become this thing that's misconstrued that if you read, you're smarter and you're more advanced. Don't get me wrong, reading is an amazing skill. And if you read a lot, you're really absorbing a lot of knowledge that you can put back into your own work. But we live in a world where you can get that knowledge from so many different sources. You can listen to podcasts, you can listen to audiobooks, you can watch YouTube videos that will give a book review and explain some of the core ideas from that book. There's a lot of ways that you can go about getting the same information that you would get from reading. But I love reading because I I love what you can gain from it. I've also noticed that having a reading list is very helpful in motivating me to finish my book. So the book I just finished reading actually last night is Troublemaker by Leah Remini, and it's about her escape from Scientology. It's really interesting, I highly recommend. But the next book I wanna read, I already have it in my notes. I know when I go to the bookstore, what to grab. Like I said, reading is definitely an area that I still need to discipline myself more in, but having it on a visual near my door every single day, I'm reading 10 times more than I would have otherwise. Over the years, I've really developed an appreciation for exercising that I never really had before. I would say that I was always an active person, but I definitely wasn't as active as I could have been. I was never unhappy with my body, but when I started exercising, I noticed a change that I didn't even realize I wanted. Exercising makes me feel more confident, more healthy, and not only that, but my days feel more productive on days that I exercise versus not. So I'm terrible at this. I probably should rework the list and just take it off, but I wanna get better at it, so I'm gonna keep it on. But I really think meditation is something that everybody should do. There's like the stigma attached to it that it's trendy 
and a sign of weakness, but, but I really think it's a sign of strength to be able to sit down and just focus completely on your inner dialogue. Because it's something that a lot of people actually shy away from. It's easier to just get caught up in the routine of things and let everything else kind of just fly by. But like I said, I'm terrible at this, so I, I really should get better at it before I preach it to you. When I put it on my table, I expected it to be something that I did every single day without fail and be really strict with it. But it's actually more like this. I just put that on there so I don't forget. But um, since I'm not a GMC, I'm gonna leave it at that. So that's it. Those are the things that I wanna make sure that I'm doing every single week. If you watch this video and you're like, oh, I kinda like this, I wanna make my own. Your table <laughs> might, probably will look completely different. No matter what, just make sure you're thinking intentionally about the goals that you wanna set for yourself. And make sure that it's accessible. It's not something you wanna stuff in your drawer. I printed the paper, I went to Walmart and I got some like DIY laminated sheets and I just stuck it up there with some thumbtacks. So that allowed me to take an Expo marker cross it out and reuse it every single week. And like I said, the goal of the chart is not to be obsessive about filling it all up with checks. I've actually only done that once. The purpose more than anything is to see at a glance what you're doing well in and what areas you're struggling in and need to put more attention towards. Overall, it's just a great way to look at how you're doing on taking care of yourself. If everything on my chart sounds good to you, you can actually go download the chart on my website. And if you do use it, please let me know. Tag me on Instagram or DM me comment, let me know. But that's about it for today. If you haven't seen my last video, it was my short film that I finally released after months and months of making it. I love it. So if you haven't seen it yet, definitely go check it out. Next week, I'll be going to New York and Boston. So I think I'm gonna vlog a little bit, which I'm a little nervous about because I don't like pulling my camera out in front of people, but too bad. I'll see you next week. <laughs>